Neeraj Kumar, do you believe that these encounter cops have been celebrated in recent times and that has perhaps in a way skewed the way the police also, the self-image of the police? Understand is that the glorification is not done by the police itself or by the government mm -hmm. or by the establishment. The glorification is done by the public at large. If that includes also occasionally the uh, you know people who make movies or who write uh, juicy books and so on. So the glorification, they are not glorified within the department. Somebody who is indulging in encounters is, is not as if he is a hero for the department. Mm -hmm. That should be very clear about. The secondly, uh, people who carry out or who do these encounters and fake encounters are, it is very important to understand that not all encounters are sure. fake. Surely, sure. Batla House encounter was not a fake encounter. But if uh, there is an encounter which is fake, then it is for the uh, person, for the police officer who is carrying out that fake encounter, it is he who has to face the charges as and when they are leveled. So he is doing all that at his own risk. Mm -hmm. And uh, fake encounters are never approved of by the department at large or by the government at large. Ajay Kumar Singh Ji, you weigh in on this debate. You know, the whole point is the pressure to deliver results, as Prakash Singh said. Does that lead to policemen believing they have a license to kill today? Certainly not. Certainly not. I am quite clear about it. Secondly, uh, this, uh, but I agree with others, that uh, uh, other friends, that the, all encounters are not false encounters. We must, uh, we must distinguish this. There are very genuine, as uh, um, my, my friend and batchmate Vikram uh, pointed out, uh, the use of force to the extent of killing is provided in law. Section 46 uh, CRPC and uh, 60 CRPC, uh, 96 to 102 uh, IPC, all those things are there. So whether, you see, an encounter is a, uh, is a meeting, sudden meeting, unknown, and uh, uh, therefore, if there is a need, you open fire. Either you are killed or the other person is killed. That is an encounter. And by the, by the very definition, if there is any, any encounter which is pre-planned or ordered, it is not an encounter. It's a false encounter and it must be dealt with such and not glorified, but it should be legally dealt with. And such things should not be allowed in a civilized and democratic society. Otherwise, where is rule of law? So, do you know, all of you are saying, all of you are sort of, you know, stating the first principles. My worry is, what is the reality? Is the reality on the ground that the police is today under pressure to deliver results? And because they are under pressure, they will short circuit processes. That's the point, Mr. No, Ajay Kumar no, Singh. No, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. If okay. somebody asks somebody ask me uh, mm -hmm. to deliver uh, through illegal means, I would flatly refuse to do so. Refuse to do so. No. Delivering does not mean. Delivering means, yes, with your competence, with your professionalism you deliver, with the systems available to you. But then there I come back. You see, unless the criminal justice system is swift, is, is effective, these things are uh, come up and then people so, short circuit the whole system. So in a way, it is the crim failures of the criminal justice system, failure to deliver swift and sure justice mainly, in a way. Mainly, Remember mainly. Atik Ahmad, Atik Ahmad, 10 judges in Atik's case were even refusing to hear his case. And over the years, the FIRs piled up. He continued to remain an MLA, MP, and thereby got away. Did that in a way almost embolden many believe? The police perhaps, dare I say, or those who were hired to kill him, to short circuit the process, which leads me to the next question. Are police acting as foot soldiers of their political bosses? All of this is being done with some element of political blessings across the country, uh, Prakash Singh. It's the politician who in a way is driving the police sometimes to short circuit judicial processes. Uh, to fix political rivals, political adversaries, Look, Radeep, uh, I think you would have read the Act of 1861, mm -hmm. and you should know, uh, I'm sure you know it already, that the Act was framed because 
the British government wanted a police force which should be at their beck and call, which should carry out their orders, right or wrong, to crush the opposition and continue with their imperial authority over India. That was the background of the Act of 1861 and that needs to be understood. That Act still remains. Why? Yeah, but that, that's my so question. a colonial police force, yes. which was acting in a way on the behest of the colonial masters at the time of the British Raj, is today acting is today at, 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 at the, the behest, behest of their of the, Indian masters. Of the, of the political bosses in power today. And that is where the Supreme Court direction number one comes into force. You should have, uh, you, uh, just to remind you, just to remind you, you gone with to the, the, very, courts. the very first direction of the Supreme Court uh, on police reform says, that the police should be insulated from outside pressures. Sir, but that has not happened today. Not for happened. example, Punjab policemen will come and pick up someone in Delhi. Assam policemen will come and pick up a Jignesh Mevani overnight in, uh, in Gujarat, take him to Assam. So the police is being used to settle political scores. Yeah, look, picking up uh, uh, state A, police picking up uh, an accused in state B, there's nothing wrong with it. But, but midnight, has, sir. But in, in, yeah, no, just a minute. Yes. But it has to be done as per the prescribed procedure. That's not happening. That's that is happening and also not happening. Right.